Hey friends, it's Friday, August 14th. Uh, thanks for joining us for Prepare Our Hearts. This is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday devotional from Central Presbyterian Church. And uh, today we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 1, verses 20, 21 through 28. And they, this would be Jesus and the disciples, went into Capernaum. And immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he had taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed. So they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Now, in the dark days of the year, known as the eight months between football seasons, of which hopefully, mercifully, somehow, partially, we're going to be uh, drawn near an end uh, soon, um, I often find myself, through the miracle of internet highlight clips, reliving one of the most emotional and enjoyable nights of my life as a Pittsburgh sports fan, and that would be Super Bowl uh, 53. The big game between the Steelers and the Arizona Cardinals contained all the suspense and drama a fan could ever hope for. There's so many incredible, amazing moments in the game um, that a 100-yard interception return touchdown and a 64 yard touchdown throw and catch between two future hall of famers to give the cardinals um, the lead with less than three minutes to play are both all but forgotten thanks to one of those kind of how did he do that toe toe tapping catches in the back corner of the end zone to win the game for the steelers with just seconds remaining now in a similar way before this we see that the miraculous catch of fish which preceded um, the calling of the first disciples doesn't even mention a parenthetical uh, annotation in Mark's gospel. Remember, p- perhaps just as astonishing as the size of the hall was the willingness of the lifelong fishermen to just get up and walk away, to leave their livelihood and their families and begin following Jesus. Those same simultaneous feelings of amazement and terror that fell on Simon and the others resulting from Jesus' command to let down their nets would become this universal reaction to Jesus' presence and his power. And we see that again here as Jesus and his disciples begin to travel throughout the region of Galilee. And as was the custom for any visiting rabbi, he was invited to share a word from the Lord with the local congregation in the synagogue. Now, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 gives us an example of the preaching that Jesus would do. And and, and, and there in Luke 4, he quoted from Isaiah chapter 61, saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty all those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now Jesus' words sparked curiosity and wonder from the synagogue audience. Could he, Jesus, actually be saying what they thought they were hearing? Could the kingdom of God be near at last? Now, everyone knew that, the, that wealth and prosperity was God's, word, God's reward for righteous living. Was it even possible that this good news applied to the poor and the captive, to the blind and the oppressed? No one, not even the highly educated scribes with their advanced skill and understanding, interpreting the Mosaic law spoke with an authority or a power like this man was doing. The people were not the only ones to take notice though of Jesus. And and this unclean spirit who was possessing a man in the crowd recognized at once what these words meant for it, which was nothing short of certain destruction. As would become common throughout his ministry, the demon demonstrated a superior knowledge of the identity of Jesus. While all the people that Jesus interacted with typically um, referred to him respectfully as either teacher or master or Lord, and they were amazed at his teaching, 
The demon shrieked and they cowered at his overwhelming holiness and his devastating deity. Like Simon Peter, they knew they could not stand in the presence of perfect righteousness in the Son of God. But unlike Simon Peter, there was no hope at all for their repentance. So perhaps just as, uh, perhaps as remarkable as Jesus' ability to exercise evil spirits was the manner in which he did so. We don't see any secret incantation, any special techniques, or any sort of sleight of hand tricks. There are no magic words, only a word. Jesus speaks and the demons flee. Their power, which was dangerously real and debilitating for, the, for their human host, was no match at all for the Holy One of God. And the message of the gospel is no less astonishing and startling today than it was those many years ago in Capernaum. To encounter Jesus through his word is to come face to face with nothing less than the God of the universe. We as, infinite, as finite fallen creatures cannot stand before the spotless Lamb of God. But the good news of the gospel is that there's freedom from the oppressive power of sin for all who would confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus is Lord and God. Now like that demon-possessed man and like Simon Peter, we can't remain as we are when we see him for who he is. We must either depart from his presence or submit to his lordship. There's no other option. Now, would you pray with me? Uh, Lord Jesus, we recognize you today for the power that you hold over, the, over this world, over our lives, over our entire universe. Lord, we have no choice but to, but to, to fall on our knees before you when we see you for who you are. We pray, Lord, that you would open our eyes to, to your nature and your character as you've revealed to us through your scriptures. God, we pray that we would be um, quick to recognize your power, or that we would be quick to submit, that we would be quick to confess the many areas that we have fallen short. Lord, the places where we have failed, and we, we humbly rely upon your perfect grace for our imperfect uh, lives and actions. Yeah, Lord, give us the strength today uh, to fully trust and submit to you. We pray this in Jesus' perfect name. Amen. Thanks so much. Uh, hope everyone ha is having a great weekend. Uh, join us on Sunday at 9 a.m. for our family service or 10.30 a.m. Uh, for our traditional worship at Central Presbyterian Church. Have a great weekend.